Do you also sometimes have a hard time figuring out what's actually worth $100 nowadays in the whiskey world? Well, I'm Steven, this is Tipsy Whiskey Shenanigans, and today we are covering 10 whiskeys I think are worth $100 plus. But before we get into that, please do me that favor, like, comment, subscribe, helps us out a ton and we seriously appreciate the support. But let's get in today's video. So. Today we are covering 10 bottles, 10 whiskeys that I feel are worth at least $100 or more. That's not to say that they fetch the price of $100 or more. Some of these are actually under the $100 bill and some are actually quite a bit over. So today I'm going over the ones that are in my collection that I think that are worth over $100 or at least worth a hundred dollars. So to kick it right off, we're gonna get into one of my favorite bottles of all time, the bottle I talk about way too often. Um, you know, I have a fan favorite for this, Elijah Craig's. You didn't see this one coming, did you now? No, Elijah Craig's are absolutely fantastic. Nowadays, and this is what I'm saying, not all are worth, you know, a hundred dollars. Nowadays, MSRP 65. I can find these for $75, $80 in my area, but things are going up. Times are changing. They'll be hundred dollars in a few years. That being said in today's market, some of the stuff they're charging hundred dollars for just ain't worth it. Where this bottle is a hundred percent worth it. This bottle is a monster. These are 12 year old barrel proof bourbons, and these are bougie Reese's peanut butter cups. If you like chocolatey, nutty, oaky bourbons, this is the one for you. Elijah Craig's are some of the best bottles I get every single year. And like I said, they're worth like 75, 80 bucks nowadays. That being said, I wouldn't hesitate to buy them for a hundred to hundred and ten dollars. Do I want to? No, of course not. But you know, I wouldn't hesitate to as well as with the next one, which these ones you don't see very often, but if you do, 100% worth $100 plus if they're charging. Knob Creek single barrels. Not any Knob Creek single barrels though. You can tell by the shape of the bottle, this is a little bit of an older one. This is a 14 year old Knob Creek. Yes, I repeat, one four. It is 120 proof, one of the best bourbons I've probably ever had in my entire life. And I was able to buy it for like $57, $58 at the time, however much a normal Knob Creek pick was going. And it is one of the best bourbons I have in my collection. And after that one, a bottle that you're probably not surprised to see on this list, but Stag Jr. I... Man, I love these. These are some of the best Buffalo Trace juice out there. I absolutely love Barrel Proof Stag Juniors. They're high proof Buffalo Trace. It is grapey, it is cherry, it is dark, it is ultra aged. This stuff is absolutely phenomenal. Just like I said about the Knob Creek, maybe not this one because this isn't entirely my specific flavor profile because it is a little bit on the lighter side. I usually go for things a little bit darker, nuttier when I'm talking about age, but this is some of the best bourbon I have in my collection and I absolutely love this. I actually did pay $100 for it. I know MSRP is 65, but I would be willing to pay 100 and 100 to probably like 120 for a stag. Again, are you gonna find those? If you do find it, it's probably gonna ask you for 200 bucks. But what I will say, if you see a stag for a little bit more than 65, it's 100% worth it. They, the MSRP should not be 65 anymore. It should 100% be more than that, but you know, not ridiculously more. I think it's like 100 to 125 dollar bourbon. Really, really solid. Well worth it. 100%. And then after that one, another bottle that actually is a over $100, Woodford Reserve Batch Proofs. These are the cash strength renditions of Woodford Reserve. These are absolutely phenomenal as well. Woodford Reserve is a fantastic flavor profile. Love my Brown Foreman products. Woodford Reserve, you get that nice banana, that chocolatey aspect, that nice vanilla ice cream, a nice little bit of a cherry drizzle, slight bit of nuttiness in there. And I remember the original batch I had was kind of like waffles covered in syrup and then powdered sugar. It was like so confectionery, 
Regardless, really fantastic barrel-proof bourbons. Usually nowadays you can find these for around 125-ish, somewhere around there. And I think that's pretty much on par with how much I'd be willing to pay for them. So if you're looking for a bottle that's over $100 and you would love to spend it, this is a great way to spend it for a bourbon that's actually worth that much and just isn't overpriced. And I know a lot of people think those are overpriced, and this could just be me Brown Foreman fanboying on it, but I really think those are well worth the 125 bucks. Moving into the world of rice, and surprisingly, I don't actually own any rice that are over $100, but I do have a few that I would pay probably up to $100 for. Not too much more, but for sure up to $100 because I have two ryes that I absolutely love. And to start that off with, Sagamore Spirits Cognac Cask Finished Rye. So this is just that Sagamore Spirits juice that's finished for an additional two years in cognac. So it's a six-year-old rye, four years, and then two years in the cognac, six-year-old rye, but it is phenomenal. The amount of like baking spices and like pepperiness that like you get out of the French oak and the cognac and then you get this nice like grapey fruity characteristic like winey influence out of there it is ridiculously good it's like vanilla grapes kind of like caramely and then there's this nice baking spice and this peppery notes like there's no like really bright herbal notes per se it's like very earthy and fruity but these are absolutely amazing i have never found this anywhere i got this actually from sagamore online so i haven't found it anywhere just sitting on the shelves locally but some of their newer stuff out there is getting to the quality of this whiskey. This is just kind of a gem of their lineup to me, but I haven't tried the sherry finish one from last year, and I've heard from a lot of people that that one was absolutely to die for. After that, Willet four-year-old rye. You're like, what? Willet? Willet four-year-old rye? Where did that one come from? I adore this bottle. I absolutely adore this bottle. And I know this is only like a $70 barrel proof rye. It's four years old, usually around like the 110s ish range, like the lower barrel proof end. But these are ridiculously good. Like, why don't people buy all of these up constantly? People hunt the purple top bourbons, but no one really buys up these. I would be willing to pay up to $100 for some of this Willet four-year-old rye. These are absolutely awesome. I get this really nice like peppery black licorice herbal note on them that I don't get on a lot of cash strength rye whiskeys that I absolutely really, really enjoy and kind of really blows my mind with like the pepperiness and the spiciness and all of that that you don't typically see in a rye whiskey like that at that intensity. And now we're getting into my favorite realms. We are getting into American single malts, which American single malts are a little on the pricey side. So from here on out, everything I'm gonna bring up is over $100 a bottle, but again, well worth it. These are 110% a buy. And the one I think is a buy above all of them is going to be this Westland Sherry Cask Finished. It is 110 proof PX Sherry Hogshead seven year old American single malt from Westland. I love Westland to begin with. They have this nice chocolate malty American single malt flavor profile. It's very, very kind of nuanced. It's new, it's different. You don't see a lot of American single malts producing malt the way that they do. So that is phenomenal. And on top of that, they put it in some PX Sherry, and you know I'm a sucker for PX Sherry, and then they cranked it up to 110 proof, so it's basically hitting the trifecta of everything I love about whiskey. You know, it's finished, it's high proof, and it's an American single malt. This is kind of the triumvirate of all of my whiskey loves coming together in one. This is like boozy, boozy raisins. It's absolutely fantastic. Really, really love that single malt. It's hard to find a single malt that's gonna be better than that. And then after that one, Balcones. I have quite a few of these actually. These single barrel, single malt 
barrel picks. These are absolutely amazing as well. Just like everything else I've brought up. And these are actually really, really high proof. And the ones in my area are usually quite a bit old. This one's 48 months old, which is four years old, which yeah, it might not be ridiculously old, but look at the color on this bad boy. This is like freaking motor oil. This is, this is called Texas aging bad boy. This is an insane bottle and it's also 66.7% ABV. So trying to do the math, carrying the one, adding the two, so on and so forth. It's like 123.4, something like that, maybe. I don't know, math is really hard to do in my head all at once. Either which way, it's a pretty high proof cash strength single malt. And Balconis does a really, really good job with it. The signature note I get on their single malts is typically a like really peachy flavor. It's this like nice oak, wood, and then this peach, and then that like really nice malty sweetness. If you haven't had any of those bottles, you'd be super surprised at the amount of flavor you can get out of a four-year-old whiskey in Texas. Not a lot of people love the Texas funk, but that bottle destroys it. Those are probably my favorite Texas whiskeys of all time. Then after that one, Westward. Westward American Single Malt. I really like this. This is not even a pick two. This is a bottle you, you, yes, you viewer can go out and buy as long as, you know, they distribute to your area. So these are 125 proof renditions, cash strength versions of the Westward American single malts. These are great. Absolutely fantastic. 125 proof. That's a lot of proof for a craftist American single malt style whiskey. And it's not too much. I, I thought when I bought this bottle that it might be a little bit too malty, a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too high proof, but it's really not. The uh, level of sweetness that comes out of the malt, if you really do like the malt and that kind of like organ style American single malt, if you've had any of their stuff before, this is really just a high proof cash strength rendition. It is that just cranked up to 11. The malt gets intensified, the flavor profile gets intensified, but it is super good. Really sweet, super fruity, and super malty American single malts. And last but not least, I'm gonna run through this one quickly because we're kind of running out of time here. Dalbach, love these. Local Arizona distillery. They're out of Tucson, Arizona. They're another American single malt producer. They're famous for kind of a mesquite style smoked whiskey. This isn't a mesquite style one. I haven't actually had the opportunity to purchase a mesquite smoked American single malt from them yet, but the ones I have purchased that are the non-smoked ones, absolutely ridiculously good. And these aren't super old. I think they're two to three year old American single malts, but they are fantastic. Usually around the 120 proof. They are super fruity, very tropical side. I get this really, really nice, like kind of like, pineapple this like sweet malty pineapple on mine so i really love that i think it's a really interesting flavor profile especially when you don't see that in a lot of american single malts so these were my 10 whiskeys that i think are well worth 100 bucks or more depending on you know what kind of bottlings you can find the bottlings i have in front of me i would be willing to pay over a hundred dollars for but that is a wrap for today's video please do me a favor like comment subscribe let me know down below what you thought about my list as well as let me know what bottles you would pay over a hundred dollars for if the msrp is under a hundred dollars or like a little bit over if it's like 200 or 300 dollars, of course you're gonna pay a hundred dollars for it because that would be legit so you know let me know if it's close to the hundred dollar range also check out the facebook instagram and the patreon links for all that stuff are down there below that is a wrap for today's video cheers y'all we'll see you later